departure 124.6, squawk 2216. Air traffic is one of the concerns general aviation pilots say they want to discuss with the Federal Aviation Administration. Saturday's meeting will be the first between pilots and the FAA in several years. In that time, the air traffic controllers went on strike, leaving the flight space in what some people feel is uncertain condition. FAA officials say they have received questions on services and, of course, on safety. Everybody's concerned about safety. We, and uh, any time you fly an airplane or drive a car, you want to be concerned about safety because uh, you've only got one life and you want to preserve it as long as you can. Uh, yes, uh, some of the questions came in were concerned about the safety of the air traffic control system as a result of the strike. The meeting will involve a safety seminar, but mostly it will just be a talk and listen session so the FAA can learn new things they can do to keep a watchful eye on the skyways. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4, Wiley Post Airport. Last year, the problem was no rain. This year, the problem is painfully obvious. Parts of northeastern Kingfisher County hadn't had time to dry out from the late spring rains before a summer storm dropped up to eight and a half inches there Wednesday night. On the Marnie farm, just north of Lacey, Oklahoma, much of the year's wheat crop sits beneath six feet of water. And just the simple act of going to pick up the daily mail involves heavy farm equipment. This day, no mail came. The Marnies won't be able to harvest their crop this year, and they doubt the farm will dry out in time to plant one for next year. If another summer storm hits, the farm could be completely isolated from the rest of the community. But the Marnies say they will remain. Mm, well, no, there's not really any place we can go unless we go. I guess we can leave it to the county commissioner's house for a while <laughs> if he don't come do something. But uh, other than that, this is this, this is, is it. This is it. Man. Tractors, the only way we'll have to get out after this evening. So this is it. <laughs> Thirty miles of county roads are eroding underwater. The county commissioner says they are doing what they can, but an unrelenting rainy season is defeating their work. It's, we've had so much rain here that this is water level and anything that falls on the ground it just, just keeps rising. And since uh, first part of May until now we've had over 40 inches of rain in this area. So that's a lot of, that's more than our yearly rain that we used to get all year long here. The area could get more scattered rains until the weekend. The people here will keep an eye out and hope that the rains miss them this time around. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4, near Lacey, Oklahoma. Uh, apparently there was a problem with the amount of airflow that was going in there that allowed those fumes to collect in there without a sufficient amount of air uh, for the men to breathe. And they were using a paint mask, uh, but apparently that was not sufficient, nor was the air supply sufficient.
Uh, make him welcome. Everybody thought he was going to get it. Thanks to the most bad pro shop for all their great work. Wheat, the Sooner State's biggest cash crop. Oklahoma has been called the buckle of the nation's wheat belt. However, another cash crop is hot on the heels of the golden grain. The latest edition of Time Magazine claims that marijuana brought $350 million to Oklahoma growers last year. Now, it's hard to verify those figures since pot planters don't keep accurate records of their harvests. But the report claims that more marijuana is grown in Oklahoma than any other state except for California and Hawaii. Authorities expect another bumper grass crop this year. We have sort of a climate in southeastern Oklahoma that you won't find really any place else except in scattered areas across the country that a lot of uh, people have told me, and I've seen it, that it's, it's almost like Bolivia or Chile or, or Colombia down there. Uh, it's very uh, hilly. Like I said, it's isolated. The, the climate, the humidity are just ideal. There's no two ways about it. It is the perfect place to grow marijuana, southeast Oklahoma. Drug agents hope to do better this year in their war against weed. State narcotics agents have been stationed in McAllister and Ardmore, close to major marijuana growing areas. They hope to get a handle on Oklahoma's pot problem before the illegal weed becomes the state's biggest cash crop. Scott Wallace, Action 4. First, it was very difficult to believe, and I began to dig very hard trying to disprove it. Couldn't believe it. Second, it was extremely painful for me. Betty Mason has been a school administrator for 13 years. So when an auditor told her Northeast was $22,000 in the hole, like she it. found it hard to believe. We have had uh, schools that may have had $100, $150, unpaid at the end of the year. Um, but we've never had anything to come near this. Apparently, the school spent money it didn't have charging things and putting away the receipts, never keeping adequate records. Much of that has been blamed on the former principal who is out of town and could not be reached for comment. There were several areas where the school went money crazy. Athletics, since the school had trouble raising money from the admission to athletic events. Other areas were drama, the yearbook, and the general activity fund. The school board does not believe fraud was involved, that it was just a case of bad mismanagement. How will Northeast High School get out of its financial debt? The school board will pay it off using taxpayers' money. But the school board is quick to point out the investigation into the mismanagement of funds will continue. Bella Shaw, Action 4 at Northeast High School. Since 1956, the Gulfstream Corporation has been producing prop jets. Many businesses purchased them so they wouldn't have to fly commercially. The planes now sell for slightly more than a million dollars. But nine weeks ago, a recession-related slowdown caused a drop in demand for the aircraft, and a decision was made to lay off 800 people out of a total workforce of 1,200. Now, not all, but the great majority of the workers will be back on the job August 16th. Vice President for Operations Bill Humes says the return to work announcement was due to a combination of things. Two things I think is one that we didn't uh, build up the inventory levels that some of the other manufacturers did before we closed our plant and the second thing is that we've in the last six weeks have seen a rise in the increase or an increase in our uh, aircraft demand. Although the workers now have a job again, the first thing they will notice when they come back to work is that there will be a cutback in the amount of production. The corporation will only be producing five planes a month instead of ten until the demand picks up again, which it may. So, August 16th, 825 workers will be back on the job, and that is good economic news for a change. 
Bella Shaw, Action 4 at Wiley Post Airport. This man is being taken hostage by a group of terrorists. Get away from us. Come on. Their objective? To bargain their way out of certain capture. It's authorized me to give you five minutes. I repeat, five minutes to surrender and give up Colonel Young. This group is trying to rescue their command leader. Step on a chair. Get back on the gypsy. Okay, we have the colonel. You see him? I can see him. Stand okay. him out. Move your troops back or give our, our demands and we'll shoot him. Initially, they use subtle persuasion through a hostage release team. The place is surrounded. There's no way you can escape. While the negotiations continue, other members of the rescue squad take up strategic positions around the shelter. The talks aren't going well. The order comes down for the firing teams to move in. Have a critique. Okay. Now. Now. Yeah. After the exercise, the officers took the men in for an evaluation, because next time, there may be no margin for error. Kevin Ogle, Action 4. This is an exciting time for Oklahoma. We're kicking off a campaign that will provide a great future for our state. I'm Jim Shoulders, and I'm talking about paramutual horse racing. Shoulders is one of many Oklahomans supporting the proposal. This TV spot featuring the former world champion cowboy began running on local stations yesterday. Send your contribution to Oklahoma Horsemen Association today. The Horsemen's Association has reportedly spent $40,000 in its campaign so far. Horsemen are hoping to raise $1 million to promote passage of this controversial issue. Horseman Ralph Shabester of Wentywood says legalizing paramutual betting would greatly benefit the state. The revenue, direct and indirect, from the horse business, as large as it is, would be very rewarding for the state. It would uh, generate millions of dollars in revenue directly and indirectly. But opponents of the issue don't seem to care. They say it will increase the crime rate. Horsemen counter by pointing to New Mexico and Arkansas. Mike Williams, a spokesman for the association, says their crime rates are lower, and they've had horse racing for years. A decision on this issue will be made when voters go to the polls September 21st. Ben McCain, Action 4. I really am. I think the whole team's excited. We got an uh, attitude amongst ourselves that we think we're a championship team now and definitely a playoff team. And we feel like with a few breaks our way, with all the talent we have, we really do believe we can get in the, in the playoffs and possibly in the Super Bowl. We were so close last year, and I don't think that a lot of the guys realized how close we really were. And uh, because of it more or less being in a situation that we hadn't been in before, it was hard for us to handle. But I think this year we realized that we should be good, we should be competing, we should be definitely a contender out there in the West, so I think the guys have got a little bit of a different attitude this year about that. Considering a 10-year win-loss record of 60, 86, and 2, Kansas City has been overlooked on the national level, but this year the young Chiefs have been given new life. 
a Thursday night nationally televised ball game against Atlanta. I think last year we had our first national recognition on Thanksgiving Day. Didn't do much with that, but I think uh, this year we're excited about the Thursday special. And we're going to create our own uh, publicity. We think we're, we're tough defense. We're going to be one of the tough defenses, if not the toughest defense in the whole NFL. Our offense is going to start opening up, and we're going to be somebody to watch. From the Chiefs training camp in Liberty, Missouri, Craig Bowlerjack reporting for NBC News. She told us what happened. The Trans Am was harassing him. Kept coming up and stopping and going and stopping and going, and then he cut him short right here, and it ran him off road. The quiet of this Moore neighborhood was broken by a pair of gunshots around 8.30 this morning. When more police arrived at this home, they found 39-year-old Sang Woo Han dead in the bathroom. He had two large bullet holes in his chest. Officers recovered a 30-30 deer rifle from the home. They also took the victim's roommate into custody. There was an ongoing feud or dispute going with the suspect and the victim over the last 18 months to 24 months time span and this morning it ended with the suspect shooting the victim two times with a 30-30 caliber rifle and the victim was found in the north, north bedroom of the residence dead from those gunshot wounds. More detectives arrested 37-year-old Quang T. Ju. Authorities say Ju confessed to the crime through an interpreter. The suspect was transferred to the Cleveland County Jail where he'll remain while prosecutors ponder filing first-degree murder charges against him. Scott Wallace, Action 4 and more. Welcome to Convenience Banking. Convenience Banking. According to banking officials, machines like this one are the wave of the future. And the only way to operate these machines is with a piece of plastic once considered a convenience, but now a necessity. The credit card business in Oklahoma is made up this way. There are six primary banks and approximately 450 associate banks in the state. All applications for credit cards must go through an associate bank and then it is forwarded on to the primary bank for approval. And the business is booming. According to officials, well over a half a million credit cards have been processed in Oklahoma, and Oklahoma City is a good place to do business. Mr. Morton, why is the Oklahoma City area so attractive to credit card issuers? I believe the reason uh, it's so attractive to credit card issuers is the number one is that in under Oklahoma law, we're allowed to charge a reasonable rate of interest for the services that we provide, and that's provided for in the Oklahoma Uniform Consumer Credit Code. Number two is we have a healthy economy. And we think that that's important for issuing the cards and in a healthy economy in particular. While experts say the future is with the plastic money, they also say the attempt to get it will be more difficult in the future. One of the reasons is a more lenient bankruptcy law, which allows a person to charge anything he likes on his credit card and then declare bankruptcy. The party most damaged in a case like this is ultimately the applicant for plastic money. But an incident like that is a rarity, and the demand for credit cards will escalate as will the supply for them. Kevin Ogle, Action 4. Three days ago, Melvin Fritz was lying in the same hospital bed recovering from heart problems. He was feeling the best he had in days. 
surely well on the road to recovery. As he rolled over to sleep, something went seriously wrong. I had a just a kind of a, a deep pain in my chest, and then when I rolled over on my back, well, that's when I really knew that what was happening. The next thing I knew, I, it hit me. Yeah, Mr. Preston, we did. Okay, you better call it. Before I had time to even ring the buzzer, well, the nurses was here and they was working on me real quick, like. And, uh, one nurse that they didn't have the shock treatment machine in here to start with, so she shocked me herself, and believe me, she can carry a blow. The nurses were able to respond quickly because of a new space age monitoring system. It lets them watch each patient's heart rate constantly, 24 hours a day, without leaving the nursing station. If it hadn't been for that, they wouldn't have known what was going on in here unless someone would have been sitting right with me. And uh, so I was just thankful to the Lord that I had it on. If you want walking proof that the system works, just take a look at Lee Richardson. In his gown pocket is a small portable unit that connects him to the monitoring system without connecting him to his bed. He and his wife can now work together or walk together towards recovery. The new hospital monitoring system has made it easier for everyone to live. Sherry Sellers, Action 4 at Deaconess Hospital. Ask just about any motorist you find about stoplights, and you're sure to hear most say some of the lights only make driving more of a hassle. This feeling is especially true when it comes to roads where one-way streets intersect, and there are stoplights at the corners. Next Monday, traffic commissioners will consider allowing left turns on red at intersecting one-way streets in Oklahoma City. This would supposedly make motorists happy and keep traffic moving at a good pace. And what do motorists think of the idea? That would be fine, because you're doing basically the same thing as a right-hand turn. Only, you, you, you know, you just got one traffic to worry about. So I, I think that'd be fine. Anything to help move the flow of traffic. You think most motorists could handle that? Uh, it would probably complicate uh, matters for some people. If they can handle one-way streets, they can handle it. I can't handle one-way streets. <laughs> I think it would be a great idea, other than the fact that some people probably couldn't, you know, handle it. But as far as the normal average driver, it'd be great, you know. Making a left-hand turn on red is so popular among some motorists that they're not going to bother and wait for the law to change. While we were standing here in the corner of 5th and Robinson, we saw several examples of people already making the turn. If the traffic commission does decide to go ahead and change the law, the final decision will still be left up to the city council. Ed Stewart, Action 4 in downtown Oklahoma City. But they were a good hockey team, and I, it's kind of sad for the you know demise of an entire team to something like this, really. Mr. Christ, what do you think about all this? I'm not too happy with it. What are you planning on doing now? I don't know. We'll just see what takes place there.
Now, could you put your finger on whose fault that we can attribute this failure to? to poor management, to the comptroller of the currency? Somebody has been faulted. That's true, but I can't give you that answer. I'm not that smart. You know, I find it hard to believe every time you're asked the question, I can't give you the answer. I mean, who was running the bank? Were you running the bank? You're the president. Was Patterson running the bank? I was and the we've president. We've got to find out who was running this institution if we're going to correct the situation that existed so that it will not happen again. I understand that, and I'm trying to cooperate with you, sir. I know you are. I was. I want some answers. My answer is, I was not the chairman of the board, and I was not the chief executive officer. I was the president and <clears throat> chief administrative officer. As he has since the trial began last week, Franklin arrived at the federal building in an unmarked van, heavily guarded by U.S. Marshals. As the testimony began, Franklin said he thought two of the former jailmates who've testified against him were government plants. Franklin admitted he had been arrested in Kentucky after the shooting with four guns, but he denied shooting Jordan. Asked if he hated blacks, Franklin said, I don't hate every black. I hate the race as a whole. I don't believe in race mixing or anything like that. The defense questioning lasted only five minutes, but Franklin was cross-examined for nearly an hour. He denied being in Fort Wayne at the time of the shooting, but admitted he had cut and dyed his hair and owned a wig to, as he said, change his appearance. Franklin spoke in a clear voice and seemed unruffled as the government prosecutor attempted to pin down Franklin's version of where he was when Jordan was shot. Franklin said he didn't know exactly, but he said he knows he wasn't in Fort Wayne because he's never been there. He was very cautious at times. Franklin said he hates to see black men with white women, but he said it doesn't put him in a rage. In answer to another question about guns, Franklin, almost with a touch of pride, said he can fire almost any kind of gun made. No, sir, I do not, Mr. Chairman. I have... Um, who? Pursuant to the rules that I was sent in the mail, uh, House, of, House of Representatives and the uh, Rule 7G5. And everyone is optimistic about what they'll do. We haven't heard too much feedback as far as what it's kind of like when rates are going up. Uh, it's it's kind of a speculative thing. There's a lot of things that will affect the interest rates, and all the indicators seem to be that the rates will, you know, have started to ease and come down. And, and we're certainly optimistic that that's what's going to happen in the future.